Welcome back. Forests are Earth's natural air purifier, but climate change is disabling this important tool for cleaning up our air. UA researchers right here at Biosphere 2 think the solution may have something to do with how plants smell. Who doesn't love the scent of a forest? Whether fresh with flora or spiced with pine sap, it so happens those aromas do more than smell good. Cardamom, people say cinnamon, yeah, all these. Yeah, it's got a spice. Yep. It definitely smells like a Christmas spice. So it's actually all spice. It's all spice. Yes. Dr. Joost van Haren has been studying how and why plants make compounds that create certain scents. He found they shift with the conditions. Think of the smell of desert rain. For instance, if you here in Arizona, for instance, when it rains, you immediately smell creosote, mm -hmm. right? That's also a compound that is actually made by the plants in response to the rainfall. By forcing Biosphere 2's 30-acre rainforest under glass into an artificial drought for three months, the team could see and smell the effects of climate stress. But what we found during this drought that it shifts in time when they're producing these compounds and how much of these compounds they produce as well as the kind of compounds that they produce. The plants can even use the compounds to warn each other about predators like insects. But most of these compounds can't be detected with the human nose. They don't build up enough in the Earth's atmosphere. So biosphere lace tubing and sensors to collect data along the forest floor and measure reactions with hypersensitive devices. I love that scent. This southern Arizona rainforest is the perfect place to watch the response to this fabricated stress. You can control how much like air is in here, how much water, like what is happening to the plants. Like you have direct control over whatever variables you want to test. All plants clean the air by taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. But what if they can't? So if the leaves cannot fix any carbon anymore because they're, they are so too stressed, they close their pores, that would be a problem, especially knowing that some of these compounds that the plants make actually help the plants seed clouds. When an ecosystem is in drought, plants may use these compounds to drive the formation of clouds and rain. If the healthy cycle breaks, a vicious one begins. In the tropical forest, like in the Amazon basin, one third of all rainforest is actually recycled water from the trees. If it needs to produce more of these compounds uh, because it is under stress, which oftentimes happen, or it wants to seed its own clouds, right, the, the, the tree, then there's less carbon left over for growth, which is the carbon that it stores in its trunk. That's bad news for humans. The carbon can stay in the trunk for hundreds of thousands of years, protecting our air. The team is also tracing the carbon dioxide to see how trees use it. Once, once you cut the trees, right, they can't put that water back into the atmosphere, which is still happening again more in the Amazon basin. So this potentially could become a runaway effect, yes. So how do we keep this natural cleaning crew and the scents that come with them flowing and healthy, the carbon safely underground? The answer may be under the dome. The more people that are involved in like recognizing what we can do here and how it can translate on a bigger scale, um, it'll be important for our future. Third part of our look at Biosphere 2's role in coping with climate change, we'll see how science could be saving your morning cup of coffee. It's next week on KOLD News 13 at 6.